Good afternoon. Uh, just sitting here after checking some heifers, getting ready to fix some lunch. And I've been trying to write some posts on Facebook and I thought I'd try something different with this video. So something that I've been working on for quite a while and not been able to get written down uh, is a discussion about anger. And, you know, Proverbs... 22:24 24 uh, talks about being careful who you associate with and how you become them, basically, or, or you become like the people you surround yourself with. So that's Proverbs uh, chapter 22, verse 24. Uh, look that up. Yeah, if you're curious. Um, anyway, uh, anger is something that's been a part of my life since the very beginning. Something I struggle with uh, on a daily basis. Um, it's a generational curse. Uh, I'm not trying to air uh, my laundry or anybody else's. Uh, it's just how it is. Uh, I grew up with a father that was very quick to anger and I've been that way my entire life. It's been a, a work in progress for 44 years uh, and I still don't have it figured out. So I, I try to work at it constantly and I fail every day. Um, something that, that I wanted to talk about was, you know, uh, a lot of folks, when they are experiencing trials and uh, they or stress, grief, uh, loss, whatever, when when they're experiencing uh, bad things in their lives, they often wonder how God could. Uh, allow something like that to happen to them. God does not punish his followers. He does not wish ill will on those that love him. Uh, he He's a very kind and loving and compassionate God. Uh, <clears throat> that being said, you know, when we when we look at the relationship of, of the trials that we experience and and our our faith and people ask, well how can had, can God allow something like that to happen? Uh, if we believe in God, we know that there's a that Satan exists, that evil exists as well. And uh, in order for Satan to be relevant, uh, he has to draw attention away from God. And the only way he can do that is through disorder, through pain, through struggles, uh, through fear, uh, all those things that cause us distress um, are things that Satan thrives on. There are things that uh, he uses to distract us and take us away from God. Um, on the other hand, uh, God wants us to look to him for the answers or for guidance on how to, to get through those things. Um, that can be really tough because it's a lot easier to just try to not deal with those things 
um, or to get in a slump than it is sometimes to to find a way through them. Um, you know, so I'm going to to kind of share with you a little bit, you know, um, there are a number of people that that wonder how God could take James from us. Um, God didn't take James from us. Uh, God received James. That's pretty profound, and it's something I heard last spring after a tragedy, but God doesn't take us from this world. He receives us. Um, you know, the struggle and the trial that, that my family has been through and that James uh, went through wasn't because um, God created it or he wanted for James to, to suffer or for his James's family to suffer. Um, the struggle was caused by evil. And it was meant to create doubt and uh, try to break not only James, but the rest of us. James never faltered. Not once. Um, so truthfully, you know, it seems like maybe we lost. We lost James. But James won. God won. And we won, because we'll get to see him again. Um, those that uh, those that that believe in God are <clears throat> they're given a promise, a promise of salvation. So uh, that's that's worth. Uh, it's worth living for, and it's worth uh, it's worth trying to live for God to receive it. Um, anyway, uh, so if you if you're struggling or or you you find that you're angry with God, uh, I think those things are normal. Sometimes a normal reaction, but think. Think through it and look for guidance and and uh, think you'll find that you know we, that we we realize or that we know that God doesn't create that kind of chaos in our life that comes from evil. Uh, I hope that helps somebody. I'm gonna leave you with a. Uh, a verse out of the the <clears throat> book of James. I think that's pretty fitting. Book of James, chapter 1, verses 19 through 27. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at, the, at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away immediately excuse me, and goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, 
not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it. They will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts is accepts as pure and faultless as this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. So, <clears throat> keep yourself from being polluted by the world and go out and uh, live as God would like for you to live. Um, I hope you all have a good afternoon. God bless.